Sporting Wales podcast. Supported by Dragonbet. Your go-to for Welsh sports news and views. Hello and welcome to a new week and a new episode of the Sporting Wales podcast with me, Geraint Tardy. This is where we review and preview the Sporting Wales week with the help of special guests and our sponsor, Dragon Bet. Sporting Wales is co-founded by Gareth Anscombe and Alice Cuthbert. And you can find our Sporting Wales magazine in various sport clubs, gyms, leisure centres and lots of other venues right across Wales and online. Now, every week we're joined by two guests in the studio to put the Welsh sporting world in its place. And this week, I'm delighted to be joined by Sunkist and very tanned Gareth Hanscom. He's been in Dubai for a week. And BBC Sports and S4C presenter Helev Anna. Welcome to you both. Um, I'm going to go ladies first. Helev, um, welcome to the pod. You good? Yeah, good. Thanks. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm very well, thanks. No one ever asked me that, you know, by the way, Gareth. So you so bear Listen, that in mind. Bear that okay, in mind. Thank okay. you. Yep. <laughs> um, busy weekend, Helev. Obviously working for BBC uh, Roger mm-hmm. Cumbry. Uh, in the stadium yesterday? Stadium uh, Saturday. Saturday sorry, I yeah. was up in Colwyn Bay on Friday night, so it started off a Friday night for me uh, under 20s good win for them up there then got back to Cardiff around 1am on Saturday morning ready to go again in the Principality for Radio Cymru yeah so that was a long stint on from 2 till 7 because we had the football at 3 so we had the Swans commentary first half but then um, yeah Wales Broadcasting at a stadium second half must have been um, difficult because it was very very that's probably the loudest I've heard the Principality in a seriously long mm. time I'm so glad that that game took a turn like that because I was nervous um, and at half time I just thought oh what are we going to discuss after this game and the atmosphere like you said it was a bit it was a bit flat yeah. at half time but um, I'm so glad that that changed yeah it was good uh, Gat, were you were there as well did you enjoy the game? I did um, it was mentally like, exhausting wasn't it? yeah like you said it was actually I was speaking to someone about the atmosphere afterwards and everyone left the stadium actually really quite happy and pleased and yeah, uh, from yeah. a rugby event I think it was uh, it was great. Mm. Um, I can't remember the noise being like that probably since maybe the run we went on in 2019, the Grand Slam in Ireland. The, the, the crowd, particularly the second half, when we had all the momentum was was fantastic. Like Hal said, thankfully we we, we managed to find another gear and um, and almost you know snuck the, the late winner at the end. We weren't too far away, but um, enjoy the game. Um, it's a little bit different, you know, working behind the scenes and. Doing some commercial stuff. Um, obviously, would would like to be playing somewhere. Um, yeah. But look, I'm glad for the boys that they they almost turned it around. Uh, a good learning experience for a lot of them, and uh, you know, hopefully, they can use that, that second half performance to kick on this weekend. Yeah, we'll talk more about the game in a minute. But um, how was your holiday as well? You have some winter sun. I hate it. Helen, other people go and have some winter sun. And it's all on their socials. And you're like, oh, I wish I was there. You're but... gonna hate me in two weeks time. Like. Oh gosh, where are you going? <laughs> New Zealand series. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Then. But how was your holiday though? On a serious note, uh, it was good, mate. Yeah, look, really busy with uh, the two little kids. Couldn't get my daughter out of the pool the whole time. But um, no, like like you said, it was much needed. Uh, it was it was busy having two little kids on the go and and a few lessons learnt probably with uh, with travelling with kids. But yeah. it was all part of the fun. So uh, and I saw a refresher after a tough couple of months for for me and the family, I suppose. So. Um, Back now, back into training and, uh, you know, hopefully getting closer to pulling on the boots. Yeah, you talk about training then. So where are you at with that? Because I know everyone's kind of been well documented on social media that you're kind of training down the veil. So where are you at in terms of your kind of rehab? Uh, yeah, no, the union, you know, Wales has been fantastic with uh, helping me um, get back to full fitness. So uh, back running, uh, haven't kicked yet, which is obviously going to be a big stress on the adductor. So not too far away from trying to kick a ball and um, once we get through that then it's another box ticked and we're a little bit closer so time frame wise probably still don't know just yet but running's going pretty well and, and this week will be a bit harder so the plan is make, you know, make each week a little bit harder than the one before it and, and hopefully won't be too far away in, in um, you know a, a month or so Good good um, it's fair to say that you guys know each other quite well because Helen some way may know some may not know you're engaged to Reese Patchell mm-hmm. um, so you're in the same social circles as as Gareth Hanscom and his family um, all I want to know really is who's the best dancer Reese or Gareth? Ooh. Probably Gareth uh, yeah. Really? Reese doesn't high, like uh, dancing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't be a high standard would it? It'd be, well, uh, it's a pretty low standard Me, if, it me. I, if I was in that option I'd got me Well your, your socials you yeah. as a bunch of wags I don't like <laughs> calling them wags really but you're out a lot and you you know how to party, right? Oh, are we out a lot? Yeah. Do you yeah. think? Uh, yeah, with Cuthy's missus as well. Yeah, I've seen you guys. You're enjoying mm, yourselves. I wouldn't say we're out a lot, but Sarah, Cuthy's missus, and Melissa, Gareth's wife here, they are the driving force behind Nights Out, and Gareth knows that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Reese, though, he's out in New Zealand. He's yeah. had his first game. H- how's he settled generally to life out there? Oh, he loves it. Absolutely loves it in Dunedin. Um, loves... 
um, playing rugby out there. They had their first game on the weekend. They won a uh, preseason game. Obviously, there's two more preseason games to go. But um, yeah, he's, he's absolutely loving it. Um, and he's settling in. Um, I know it's it's far away and I am going to see him soon. Um, but yeah, after he played on Friday night, yeah, he hasn't he hasn't played since like eight months, I think. So I, did, I think he did feel like he'd been hit by a bus the next day because, yeah. you know, we haven't played a game in a while. Um but he enjoyed it, yeah. Yeah. Are you missing him? Is he missing you? Is it or is it yeah. been okay? Uh, yeah, of course we are uh, missing each other. But um, it's fine. I'm going to see him the week tomorrow. Uh, has he has he said much about the hacker? He has had hacker training. How's he finding it? Um, good, but I don't think they had to do it in the preseason game in Queensland. No, they won't. They won't. But Lee, 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 Lee Halfpenny said to do a hacker. Though. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, what was your rate, 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 rate him out of ten for that guy? <laughs> um, Look, we actually spoke a few weeks ago and I, I know Lee was quite nervous about it. So I said, look, you just got to commit to it. Um, I think he did a good enough job from what I've seen. Maybe a little bit late on some actions, but uh, he can only get better. So it didn't help that he stood next to the the leader. So obviously the camera is always going to be on the leader and he's, I think, to the right of him. So oh, it's uh, he's given it a good go. But, uh, yeah, a bit, of, a bit of work to be done, I think. Reese will have to ask you for tips about the hacker. Like... He, he he's helped you and the other boys with the Welsh <laughs> anthem. anthem. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Reese did. Him, <clears throat> Ken Owens. What helped you? Yeah, it was Hadley yep. Parks. Yeah, it was Johnny McNichol. But is that something you think that like, Lee would have been worried about? Because you've got to learn a lot before the game. But it no, would not be like, oh my god, I've got to do this dance. So oh, that, if, you if, know you know, uh, if you know Lee, <laughs> he would have been so stressed out about the hacker, which uh, which is almost part of the fun. But. Um, no, look, that, you can't really go too far wrong with it. You know, the main thing is you sort of buy into it and commit to it. And they almost use it just as much as a, a team bonding session. Um, you know, after trainings, there'll be times where they just have to go and do the huck and they'll be talking about what they're trying to do with it. And um, as the year progresses and the season goes on, they get better and better. And particularly for the Crusaders, they've made the finals or won the finals so often. Mm, yeah. uh, they always do the hucker. Uh, you know, after the final or in the final, so uh, that'll be the main thing is trying to be trying to be good at it come the end of the season. Yeah, it was pretty cool seeing a Welshman do it. I got to be honest. Yeah. I look forward to seeing Patch do it as well. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, Patch be good. For that. Patch Patch be good. Really you know, like because in like Welsh speaking schools, you have to do like the Welsh folk dancing the Downshire yeah. in So I, I'd imagine Patch would be alright with it. Oh, I don't want to set him up for a fail. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Looking after your man, fair play. <laughs> and listen, it's great to have you both with us, but before we turn our attention to the weekend's activity, uh, let's turn our attention to the sad news that broke on social media on Sunday night. The King, Barry John, sadly passed away at 79 years old. Uh, so who better to have on the pod to pay honour to Barry than uh, Peter Jackson? I'm delighted to say Peter joins us right now. Um, Peter, welcome to the pod. I'm sorry it's under such sad circumstances. Um, we've already seen hundreds and hundreds and thousands of messages all over the world honouring Barry John. Um, from footage I've seen of him playing, he just seems to be a player that had so much grace and time on the ball. But from your point of view, what made Barry so special? Well, it's always a pleasure to uh, talk about somebody like Barry who brought such beauty to the game. Um, I mean, you look at rugby today and the, the, the sort of power of the game has pulverised most of the artistry out of it. And... Uh, Barry, I think, was pretty appalled by that um, because first and foremost, he played the game that I think many of us would think the way it was meant to be played. You know, you 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 looked for space rather than look for looking for an opponent to run into. And uh, yeah, he. I mean, it's impossible to overestimate his status fifty uh, odd years ago, uh, surrounding that historic. 1971 Lions Tour of New Zealand, the 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 first and only time that the Lions have beaten the All Blacks uh, in New Zealand, and the impact it had on rugby union as a sport. I mean, it was pretty much a, a kind of niche sport in those days. Um, but Barry, more than anybody else, as a result of what he did on that tour, popularized the game, put it put it kind of into mainstream. Um, I mean, he. Um, he couldn't get over the reaction that the Lions had when they flew home back into Heathrow. Thousands of people. I mean, as he himself said, you know, we, we suddenly looked around and we, we thought they must be expecting the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it was that big and that unusual. And and Barry was the star of it all. He was the, the orchestrator, the ringmaster. He played the game in the best possible spirit. Um, you know, and 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 what what people loved about him, and and people who weren't 
didn't have to be sort of rugby fanatics to appreciate this, was that he had that that priceless quality that all great players have in team sports. They have time. And he and he never ever seemed to be flustered. He he never gave you the impression that he was actually pouring with sweat over what he was doing. Now that I I mean that in in, in, a, in, a, in an uncritical way, mm. he would glide in space. You know, he he wouldn't. Other people would be busting a gut, but with Barry, you always felt well he can glide here, and he, he would ghost past people um, just with the shake of a hips. Really, I mean, he was he was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, he made it look so, so easy. Um, every single video I see of him, I think, wow, it looks easy there. Um, and he created an amazing partnership as well with Gareth Edwards, didn't he? Um, you must have loved watching them two play together, Peter. Yes, I mean, it was it, it was very special. I mean, I, I mean, around about that time, giving my age away now, but but I mean, there were other great partnerships, Torval and Dean, uh, uh, Lillian Thompson, the Australian fast bowlers, and, 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 and Edwards and, and, and John were right up in that. It, it, it was uh, it was very very special what they achieved. Um, the famous story about when they first met was, of course, the amateur regulations were such that in those days you weren't allowed to meet until the Thursday before the match. The first time the two of them met, uh, Gareth said, "Said, well, how would you like me to pass the ball?" And and Barry said, "Look, you throw it, and I'll catch it. Don't worry." <laughs> yeah, um, as simple as that. It kind of went from there. It, it was. I mean, when you had Barry in your team, he thought, well, no need to worry about who's going to create the tries. And he had this wonderful nonchalance. I mean, Mervyn, remember Mervyn Davis telling me a story that, that they're on the day of the opening test match in New Zealand. And of all places, it's at the old Carisbrook Park Stadium in Dunedin, you know, the 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 original house of pain. Nobody who enters here is going to come back out. And... The most of the lines, particularly the pack, were sort of psyching themselves up, banging heads against the dressing room walls, etc. Uh, and Barry sitting in a corner with his feet up and saying, "Look, don't worry, boys. You know, it's it's only a game. It's only a game. You know, how many points do you want me to score today? <laughs> yeah. You know, leave it to me." And then his punchline was, "Look, it's only the All Blacks. Don't yeah. worry." And and he would then go out and 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 and, and sort of. You know, play an even better game than the one he talked. It was, um, he, he was just amazing, and he gave the impression that it all came very easily to him. But, but he did work at it. And one of the untold stories or the forgotten stories, Geraint, about that '71 tour is that he turned down the invitation to go. He said, "No, I'm not going," and that was because he'd got. Uh, a pretty nasty injury in the last game Wales played that season, which was France at the old Stade Colomb in Paris. And it was the game that won Wales the Grand Slam. Yeah. And they're hanging on at 6-5, defending the line for all they've got. And it looks like a lost cause because Benoit Doga, who was uh, an immense French back row forward in every respect, he was seven inches taller than Barry. He's seven stone heavier. And he looks at, and the only bloke standing between Doga and the line is Barry John. And he thinks this is no problem. He just barrels straight through him. And Barry somehow prevented the try being scored, despite having his nose sort of relocated to one side of his face. And then the French doctor came on and jabbed away to him in French, not, not unnaturally. <laughs> and Barry kept, didn't know what he was saying, kept saying, wee, 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 wee. And he said he put one hand on my forehead and the other hand on my nose and shoved it back into place. And he said the pain was unbearable. And yet within minutes of that, he'd scored the try at the other end, which clinched the Grand Slam. I mean, I'm an amazing man and a, a, a humble man and a very kind and gentle person, always available. None of this, there was none of this, do you know who I am with Barry? It, 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 it was just absolutely genuine. Yeah, that's amazing to hear. But I suppose for, for younger rugby fans, they would be surprised maybe kind of reading about the news and then seeing the age that he retired. He retired at 27, Peter. Um, why do you think that was? You know, could give us some background into why he made that decision. Well, his, uh, his reason, and, and no reason to doubt it at all, was that he, he was overwhelmed by the adulation. And he was saying, look, 
I mean, I'm only a rugby player. You, you, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, it's not as if I'm a rock star or yeah. I'm making fortunes, but but people saw him as a bit of a rock star, and you know, he. He put rugby where it had never been. I mean, that year, Geraint, the Sports Personality of the Year, you know, when the whole nation watched it, 1971, Barry was on the podium. He was number three. Yeah. And number two was George Best. He was pretty good. Mm. And number one was the Princess Royal. So that was some elite company. So he'd gone there. Then he becomes the first rugby player, I think, to be ambushed as he comes off a Five Nations game at Twickenham of all places by the late Eamon Andrews of This Is Your Life. Thing, yeah, yeah. You know? uh, and so he's got all that and he's in demand everywhere. It, it, just a sight of him stops the traffic in the centre of Cardiff. Uh, and and he's th this is all troubling him a bit. You know, he's he's kind of feels he's lost something. And he says that the day that he decided that it was too much – was um, sort of round about early 72 and he went to Rill to open the extension of a bank. And, you know, he said it was a lovely. Uh, and he said this girl came up and gave me a bouquet and she curtsied. And, and you know, he said, crikey, you know, it's come to this. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm not royalty. And he, he decided there and then that I, I'm going to finish. He did, mind you, have. He'd signed a couple of contracts then. He signed one with a, a sports manufacturing company. Uh, and two, the big one that he'd signed was to join the Daily Express uh, as a rugby journalist. Uh, being on the rival newspaper, I was kind of hoping that he would continue to <laughs> keep, keep playing, son. Don't be scooping me every day of the week. Yeah. Um, and, and people like Gareth tried to talk him out of it. They, they, they just couldn't. Oh, come on. You're, you're 27. You're at the height of your fame. Uh, and you see, he was never driven by money because had that been the case, he would have uh, had three major offers from rugby league clubs, twice from Wigan, once from St. Helens. He said he actually had the pen in his hand and was about to sign the contract with St. Helens when he, he thought, no, this is no, no, I'm taking the easy way out. No, this is not right. And the other one, uh, sort of more intriguingly, was um, put to him by Stanley Baker, the film star of Zulu fame, Rourke's Drift and all that. And Stanley Baker was representing a consortium of businessmen in Southern California who wanted Barry to come and play NFL. Yeah. And, you know, he said, look, don't worry, we're not going to expose you to any of the, the bone crunching stuff. You, you'll just come on and, and kick the goals when we need you. And this is 1973 and the offer was £120,000 a year. Well, you can wow. work yeah. out what that's worth today. But again, Barry said, well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and trouble, but, you know, no thanks, I'm, I'm, I'm staying where I am, you know. And he, he then went into journalism and, and made a good job of that. Yeah, fascinating stuff there, Peter, and um, thank you for your tribute towards him. Um, while we have you here, if we can, can we kind of reflect quickly on the Wales-Scotland game and look forward to England as well on the weekend? Um, what was your thoughts of that crazy game of rugby we saw in the Principality Stadium? Yeah, it was uh, one of mounting... Embarrassment at watching the first half. I thought, my goodness, when have I ever seen Wales play as badly as this? Mm. Uh, there was nothing. They were plodding around the field as though, well, you know, we've got no chance here. And um, and, and and I think then two things happened. Uh, obviously, they, a few rockets were fired in the dressing room at half time, and substitutions were made, and the the, the game plan, wretched though it was, was was abandoned. Uh, and they suddenly thought, right, we'll we'll play it as we see it, you know. We, we, we'll go back to the, the old Welsh way. But before they could do that, of course, Scotland has scored again, so you're 27 points down. And I think the other psychological factor, however subconscious, I think Scotland looked at 27-0. It's a bit like the, probably the first time I've seen an international rugby team declare. Yeah. You know, ah, we've done enough. Well, hang on, you've got a bonus point try still to get. And had had Wales nicked it at the end, then it would have served Scotland right. And and yes, you're right. In, in the second half, it, it, it was tremendous stuff. Four tries in, what, 20 minutes. And at the end, I think everybody was so bewildered, not least both teams. I mean, Scotland needed reassurance. Well, we have won it, haven't we? Uh, and, and Wales, I think, needed confirmation that, mm, well, have we got four points or is it two? Ah, oh, we're just one short. So, yeah, it, it was amazing. But then... 
maybe the more hard-headed will say, well, why couldn't we have played from that, like that from the word go instead of waiting until the game was virtually lost before there was a reaction? England at Twickenham, um, well, England were no great shakes um, in Rome. They still gave every appearance of a team that's trying to get out of its straight jacket. So, you know, there should be no reason for Wales to be at Twickenham, as they might have done in, in, in years gone by. Um, I'd still be surprised if they beat England, but, you know, I, I think it'll be... I, I think it'll be close enough. Uh, and if, if Wales did upset them, then I wouldn't be surprised because the Six Nations guarantee, if it teaches you one thing... It teaches you never be surprised by what they throw up. Yeah, indeed. So don't fear them. And it's a contest upon us on Saturday in Twickenham, that's for sure. Uh, Peter, it's always great to talk to you. You have so much knowledge and you're, you're so articulate as well. So thank you so much for your time today. And um, Barry John, what a character he was. What a man. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Peter, um, thanks uh, for that. And a fantastic tribute to a great man, which of course mm. was uh, Barry John. Um, Gareth, being a 10 yourself, did you ever get the pleasure of meeting Barry John? I did actually. I was lucky enough to meet uh, Barry a couple of times um, post match. Um, a really nice guy. Um, God, what a legend of, of Welsh rugby and, and the global game. Actually, uh, you know, when you think about Welsh rugby, his name has got to be right up there next with you know the great Sir Gareth Edwards. Um, a real big loss to the to the game, particularly obviously Welsh rugby, but a true legend of the sport. And and um, when you understand the the history of the game, you understand how great that Welsh side was. Back in the early 70s, um, what an absolute legend. And, and a, a, such a nice guy off the pitch too. So very lucky I got to meet him. Um, and look, when I moved over almost 10 years ago, you know, I, I know who Barry John was. So he's one of those guys that his name goes ahead of him in terms of just how important he was and what a global superstar he was. Um, a shame he retired so young, mm. which I didn't realise until today actually that, that he decided to retire so early. But... Um, yeah, huge loss to the game, Welsh rugby. I'm sure they'll hopefully honour him this weekend. Would be really, re really nice and, and something he deserves. But uh, yeah, another sad loss for sure. Yeah, let's hope they do that in Twickenham. Um, Hello, obviously growing up with Welsh rugby clips everywhere. Mm. Um, Barry Johns, whenever you watched him, just always seems so smooth and, and magical on the ball, really. Yeah, him and, well, Sir Gareth Edwards, yeah. the, those gr the J JPR. There's, there's, there's been a, a lot of sad news in Welsh rugby recently and um, he'll definitely be be a massive loss and like Gareth said probably um, a, a lovely time to uh, remember him on the weekend now with, with Six Nations being around him um, but yeah it's someone that everyone knows the name of Barry John like the other stars of that generation and um, yeah, it's uh, just sad news. Yeah, very sad news. Um, let's move on to a game of rugby that Barry John would have definitely enjoyed on the weekend. Maybe not the first half, but the second half he'd have been <laughs> proud of it. Um, Wales-Scotland, 27-26 to Scotland, the final score. Um, what's your overall thoughts, Gas, straight away on that game? Because for me, it was just a crazy game of rugby. Yeah, it's probably a fair summary, actually. Um, first half, we just didn't seem to quite get out of the gates, did we? It seemed a bit slow and... Look, it's it's tough when when our set piece struggled. You know, we lost uh, four or five lineouts at crucial parts, and it, it's tough then to then try and amount you know a bit of pressure and 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 get some scoreboard pressure ourselves. So we turned over a bit of ball, and uh, Scotland, to be fair, you know, took their chances, uh, a couple of really nice tries, and um, disappointing with the way we started. You know, I, I'm sure I'm sure they'll talk about that today and tomorrow. But you've got to give some of those young boys a fair bit of credit for fighting back. Uh, 20, was it 27 0? We got yeah, down yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to get yourselves out of that hole. And we really, truly had a good chance of winning at the end there. We had all the momentum. You look at that high, well, it looks like a high tackle to me. I've seen those easily be given for a penalty. You know, if that's given, we get a shot that sticks to win it, which no one would have seen coming. So um, I think we've got to put it into context about. I think Scotland thought they'd had the game sewn up at 27-0 and they've switched off. They've had a couple of yellow cards. So the game was a bit of a free hit the last 30 minutes for us. Uh, we almost pulled it off, but if we can take parts of that second half performance and work on that, I think that's the way we need to move forward with Wales. And if we can do that with a bit more accuracy and shore up some of our set-piece problems, mm. then we're going to cause some some teams some real issue, particularly when you're you think when we got the ball to the edges on the weekend, we looked really sharp. The likes of Rio Dyer, Aaron Wainwright in the in the wide edges. Um, 
you know, Tomas added some real value. I thought Elliot D was superb coming off the the bench. Teddy Williams carried well. Um, you know, there were some bright sparks. So we'll be a little bit annoyed with the way we started, but I thought, you know, the way we finished was, was really pleasing. Yeah, hello, it would have been the biggest ever comeback in Tier 1 rugby if it had done it. It would um, have been, if it had happened. Yeah, yeah that if, would have been yeah. great. But like, obviously, you were working live on it for, for Raja Khumri. Yeah. What were kind of your co-commentators saying during the game about that at halftime? Because whatever Gatlin said halftime mm. definitely worked. Well, I think the main takeaway is that the youngsters would have learned so much from that game. As Gareth knows, playing international rugby is completely different to playing um, URC level or club, even though they're so young, they have been exposed to the league, um, can win it, for example. Um, but playing in the Principality Stadium is just a different ball game. Um, and I think they will take so much from that game. And also, it just shows their... No, never say ne they did. They didn't give up, did they? Those no. those young players and well, everyone in that squad. Did they didn't give up, and um, that is something to be proud of. That they turned that game around in in such in such fashion. Um, I had Emmett Lewis with me, former Wales yeah. flanker, commenta uh, co commentator, and he was he was positive after the game, and you could see from from the reaction of both players, Scotland weren't happy that they got that win. Well, no. obviously they're happy they got the win, but that wasn't shown in the way that they reacted after the game. They think they were just relieved more than anything that. They got the win. No one knew how to react because it was such a crazy second half. Um, but the attacking flair, the intent was there in the second half, passing the ball. Um, Johan Lloyd, I know we missed the first kick to touch and I bet he would have been feeling shaky after that, but he, he brushed that off and he got mm. straight back into it and he put some people in lovely holes, didn't he? And he, um, yeah, Thomas Williams was outstanding when he came I think until it shows, talking about how do the youngsters learn mm. at this level, one, they now know how quick and intense uh, Test Rugby is about because it's a massive step up and it can be quite overwhelming and we probably did look a little bit overwhelmed in that first half. But also it just shows how close mentally, you know, you got to live on that edge and Scotland took a, you know, took the foot off the, the gas pedal in the second half and we just went up another notch and it just shows there's not much at Test level that really separate the teams. But if you're mentally there... Um, what you can accomplish. So I, I, I'd like to think that some of those young boys would have learnt a little bit about the intensity of Test Rugby and, and where you have to be at mentally. You know, you can't switch off. You can't go drifting in 10 minutes because if you do that, Finn Russell's going to hurt you. You know, you can get away with that maybe playing for your regions um, at times and, and you might not get punished. But at this level, if you if you switch off for 10 minutes, you're going to know about it. And we certainly did. But like Hal said, it was really pleasing to see the fight back. And leaving the stadium, you did leave feeling fairly happy mm. with the result, mm. if, if you could. Yeah. Um, that first half then, was it did we, Was it the lack of international experience that we were missing? Was, were they finding it hard to apply themselves in that arena? Or do you think that they were nervous? Like, um, what was it? I'm we not just, sure. We I weren't putting phases mm, together, we were yeah. nothing. Was it the game plan? I don't know. I, I don't think... We lost four or five lineouts. That doesn't have anything no. to do with experience, to be honest. That's okay. just being accurate, making sure... I, Whatever, whoever we choose to throw to in the lineup and just being accurate in what we do. So that doesn't have much to do with experience. So the, there was an issue there that we had to fix and I think they got better as the game went on. And and maybe we just, there was a couple of options there where we just let the ball be a bit too slow for too long and, mm. and um, you know, everyone needs to step up there. That's, that's not a 9 and 10 thing. That's right across the board. They need to look at the option taken and then how do we get some, some tempo into the game? I know Gat spoke afterwards about maybe feeling the first half was a bit flat. It, it sort of looked that way, didn't it? So that's where uh, the whole team needs to be a bit better. Um, a game plan has to be about moving the ball, I think. Yeah. And when we do that, we look we look much better. We look like it's a bit more Welsh rugby. It's, it's in our DNA to move the ball, I think. We're not – I think in general when you look at Welsh rugby, we've never been overly blessed. Look, the golden – maybe that generation we've had 10 years ago when you had – Jamie Roberts and Jonathan Fox and Alex Cuthbert, George North. We had big, big mm. backs. Maybe we had a bit more of a physical game, but I think in general, Welsh rugby's always been about moving the ball. And and I think maybe that second half was our blueprint of, of again, you got to do it at the right times, but if we can go down that route, I think uh, we'll have a fair bit of success. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, moving the ball, because when Thomas Williams came on the second half, he, he managed to get that ball moving. There's a bit more pace in our play. Uh, I'm a big fan of Gareth Davis's, but he didn't quite get that momentum going. Is it sometimes each to come on and have an impact on the One, game? In yeah, 9 and 10, potentially? Yeah, I hope people realise this. It, it's it's a free shot 
for Tomas and Johan coming off the bench. It really is. The game was done at 27-0, I think. No one would begrudge the boys for trying and losing 40-0. Mm. They came on and it worked. Um, and when you're a 9-10 and 10 and you can sit on the bench and you get a chance, 40, 50 minutes, to have a look at what's going on, you've got a fair idea what you can do to maybe make some changes. And and it came off. And I thought those boys that came off the bench did a great job. They were fantastic. Um, but I wouldn't put... I, I don't think you can judge the boys that started at 9 and 10 too harshly because ultimately we lost a fair bit of ball at line-out time and, you know, you, you, you have to be Superman to, to, to change that. So mm. I don't think that's entirely fair that those guys get judged too harshly. Um, but coming off the bench, having a free shot, I think those boys made the most of it. Yeah, they definitely did. They did, they did well. Didn't they? It was fantastic to see them come back and show that character, mm. Helen, because I think that's one thing I was sitting there watching it going, I don't think these guys can come back at all, but the mm. character that they showed is a huge positive for Gatland. Oh, absolutely. And it's um, they had nothing to lose, like Gareth said, so why not? Um, but I feel like going to Twickenham next week is a whole different ball game. Go Playing in Twickenham, um, <coughs> HQ, as they like to call it. Yeah. Um, but then England didn't play amazingly against Italy. They could have lost that game. Obviously, this, this, I, I think they played they played much better in their second half of their game as well against Italy. Um, Italy will be disappointed they didn't get the win there. Um, but it's important that Wales got two points in that in yeah, that yeah, loss yeah. on Saturday because that could play a big part in the in the rest of the campaign. You never know, and Scotland will be um, very very disappointed. Um, I think with their second half performance, and they've got to face. France, is it next? Is it, yeah, yeah. I think encouragingly, everyone's been going about the Scottish team, how much they've improved. If you look across the Six Nations, they've been the most, they are the most settled squad. Mm. Um, even though they won, and look, they were up 27 0, looking fairly dominant. I'd be worried as a Scottish fan thinking this was a Welsh team we were supposed to yeah, yeah. easily win. Mm. And, and, Maybe they'll say, look, mentally we switched off at 27 0, because it did look that way. Well, Gregor Townsend, I was down by the 10 of the match, and he was fuming after the game. Yeah, well, he was not happy. You the know? momentum was only one way. That last f- 10, 20 minutes, it was all, it looked like we were going to win. Yeah, it, yeah. We were just going north up the field the whole time. We were getting the ball to the edge as well, getting them on the outside. and um, So that should be a good game next week, France. Um, yeah. Scotland, two teams with a point to prove because of what happened with Ireland, Scott. Um, I think, not to talk too much France. about Scotland, but you know, I think it's a, possibly a marker from where they're really at. Yeah. Underachieved in the World Cup, but potentially. They should have beaten Wales, everyone is saying, and mm. hell, if they don't beat France or put a performance against France, you know, maybe people will turn at Townsend and ask questions about him, do you think? Well, p- poss- possible, um, isn't it? It's very possible. Um but it's not football, so at least, yeah, at yeah. least that's that's his saving grace. <laughs> for you know? for yeah, Scottish so rugby, you've got to be thinking, if not now, when? Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm. totally. When are they going to get a bit of chance? And and what's tough is Ireland looked fantastic on the weekend. Yeah. They were so impressive. And I think France will bounce back, but they've got to contend with those two sides. They're probably the top sides at the moment. But I don't know how many more times they're going to get a chance where they say, this is our squad, we've got some superstars across yeah. the board. They do. Well, um, show it, prove it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just quickly on Gatland, will he be concentrating on the second half in training this week, or will he be like, "You guys owe me a half of rugby"? Um, no, I, I don't know. I, I think they'll try and take positives out of the game. You have to, right? With with the younger side, um, they will no doubt address the first half because the game was a, a literal game of two halves. Mm. So they need to identify why do we come out of the gate so slow. Because if they do that in Twickenham, it's going to be a tough day at the office. I don't think you'll get the same sort of comeback away from home. So they need to identify what caused that. But there was certainly a lot of positives coming out of that second half. And I think the group will will target those and work on those. And um, we know with Welsh rugby, for some reason, the longer we're in camp together, I think we get up to the, the top level after a few weeks and we get better and better. So that's something they'll be talking about and, and hopefully... Uh, something for them to build on. Yeah. It was a shame to see Sam Costello go off, wasn't it, Helen, mm. in that game? Because it was kind of his chance to kind of put a marker down at 10. Um, what was your overall thoughts about his situation now? Well, if you think about it, I think he's had quite a few concussions um, in the past year, maybe uh, in the past six months, maybe too many. Um, he, I think he needs to take time out, not from the game for a long time. It just I don't think he'll be involved this weekend if he's just had another head knock on the weekend. So um I don't know for how long we'll see 
Sam Costello out of that 10 jersey for yeah. in for Wales and for the Scarlets. He, he, he's just come back from a lengthy layoff with a different sort of injury. Um, so I bet he would have been raring to go and could not wait to start that game. And it's just so, so disappointing. And I, and I feel for him and I hope he gets back um, soon. But, you know, with the heads, you need to take them very seriously. Yeah, but Johan Lloyd, he, he did well, didn't he, when he came on? Fair play to him. Generally, obviously, he had a shaky start with a kick that he missed, you mentioned mm. earlier, Heather. But I think, he, you know, he, he did kind of add some impetus into the game for us. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Johan showed that, I think, all season at the Scarlets, even with the Scarlets side that's that struggled. Uh, he's had some really positive moments. So um, what they do at Tim will be interesting this week. Like Hal said, uh, Sam has unfortunately had a few head knocks and he is a young man. So mm. we need to make sure we protect him and his career. Um, I think he's bounced back from this knock on the weekend fairly well, but sometimes these decisions are taken out of the players' hands and I wonder whether his age and the fact that he's had a couple recently might mean he might need to have um, a break for a couple of weeks. If that's the case, obviously, Johan will, will start at 10. Um, the thing is, Johan can play at the back. He can play wing, yeah. centre, full well, back. I, I saw so, I think Shanks named him on, on the wing for this a week. scrum, yeah, last I did night. See yeah, that. Did. So yeah. I, I think because of that, I think they'll probably go with Johan at 10, if that's the case with his, with his head. Who, who knows? But, yeah... Um, and, and there'll be a chance for him to, to, you know, play like that from the start, I suppose. But he, he had some great moments. He's got great feats and got great skills. So I think for Johan, if he can just tidy up some parts and and, and um, give the game a little bit more structure at times so then he can have his special moments, then, you know, he, he is definitely um, a talented individual that Wales need to use. How do we make sure we don't start like that again, again, Twickers then? <laughs> what, what 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 needs to be said, what needs to be addressed? Well, we just need to look after the ball. Look, you, you can't win international rugby losing four or five lineouts in a row. And I think one of our problems we've had recently over the last 12 to 18 months, we seem to lose lineouts in bunches. So we don't just win one and win the next one. We seem to lose two or three on the bounce. And it's tough. You look at Ireland against France in the weekend. France could not win a lineout. No. They couldn't get the ball. Jonathan Dante, a strong midfield with Gail Fickett, you wouldn't know they played. They could not get their hands on the ball. So if we're struggling at set piece time, it's tough to get in the game. You're living off scraps and you're trying to make things up and sometimes it makes you force your hand a little bit and, and you give opposition uh, opportunities. So we need to tidy up our set piece. And I think with us at the moment, the longer we can stay in games, the more confidence we'll take out of it because I think our youngsters will start believing a little bit more and and, and take some real, you know, uh, confidence out of the, those situations. So for us this week, we've, we've just got to look after our half, I think, and be quite pragmatic in that there and then come alive in their half when we do get opportunities. And if we can do that, look, at our, uh, look after our ball at set piece, then I think we've got a great chance. I, I don't think England's attack is where it needs to be at the moment. I think they've talked about that. And it looks like the defence has changed the fear, but they look really aggressive, which is great, but they can hang themselves doing that. Italy got on the outside of them a few times from from exposing that defence. So I think Wales will be given a fair few opportunities if we can be d disciplined in our attacking structure. I think they're going to get a lot of opportunities. So and The discipline, I think, is something that they need to take from the weekend. They only gave away four Penalties. They only conceded four penalties, which is yeah, none in the second half. None in the second, and that they were all in the in the first half. The, arguably, they could have been one in the second half, but yeah. still, that's a great stat to go into yep. the England game with, and that is definitely a positive and something that that team can say. Listen, we can continue with this discipline because at the end of the day, that's what Gat said that cost them the game was three points that Finn Russell kicked. So kicks in international rugby and uh, three points conversions, etc. Can win do, all do you teams. think England go in this week as strong favourites? Um, that's a, that is a good question. For, as a punter, I think England at home are always favourites. Yep. Um, we'll get James Level mm. on from Dragon Bet to get the actual odds mm. in a bit. Do you know what I mean? But I, I do. Close. I do think England are favourites. Mm. Yeah. I think their strength in depth, their bench. Would it on. surprise you if we won? No. No. But again, do you know what I mean? But then I am I am that's always positive about Wales. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. But I do think we're we're concerns me. I think I think we won't make the same mistakes again in the first half. I think we'll match them at the start. But I think when their bench comes on and our bench comes on, then I'll be thinking, okay, they've got more depth. Can we go the eighty against them? Yeah. And the thing about Twickenham is it's such a big stadium. It yeah. is quite overwhelming when you're first there. So I just I really hope for for the boys that they just start well and mm quite composed and just get settled and enjoy the occasion because 
you can get overawed and overwhelmed really quickly in Twi Twickenham. It's a massive stadium. Their crowd is a unique crowd. Um, and I feel if we can really just ease our way into the game in the first 20, I really think there's an opportunity there for us. I, I don't think we're favourites. I'd agree with that. But I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if at full time. You think we're going to win? Is that what you're saying? He's, he fancies it. Yeah, he does. He's Look dead, at that yeah, smirk yeah. on his face. I yeah. actually need to see. I'd love to know what the, the, the odds are well, because we'll, we'll I really would... Wouldn't mind looking at that for yeah. the boys, for just, sure. Just quickly, Gatlin named his team really early last week. Mm -hmm. Do you think he'll do the same this week? Or can he not because he's kind of more 50-50s after seeing what he saw on Saturday? I don't think he will because of the bumps that oh, okay, he took yeah, from the game. Enough. And he'll want to give guys every opportunity to to get to get right. Yeah. Uh, so if boys don't train Thursday, you know he's going to need to give guys the first couple of days to, to get right and see what we're at, I, I'd imagine. So, yeah. My gut would probably tell me no for this week. Do you think Thomas will start instead of Gareth at nine? I do. I think he will as well. I think he Only will. because of the and positive like, impact. There's like, not much between them. And know. like Gareth said, it's nothing to do with Gareth Davies personally. It's just, um, I think Thomas made such an impact. And he, he was everywhere when he came on in the second half. So that potentially could swing it for him. But then it, you keep him on the bench so that, as that impact player again. I mean, that's why I'm not paid the big bucks like Gats is, so I'll leave that to Gats. <laughs> what do you reckon, Ka? Um <clears throat> Yeah. I, yeah, I think they will. I yeah. think they will. I don't think there's much in it. And like I was trying to say before, I think people need to remember it is different son a match. Mm. As much as we'd love to see the boys from minute one throw the ball around like that, you, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. They can have elements of it. But it's so much easier to do when the game's lost at 27-0. Fair enough. Let's leave the rugby there for now and remember that James Level will be on from Dragon Bat later on to give us the odds on the Six Nations this weekend. But if you're on the move this weekend, perhaps uh, searching for a next car, uh, find yours today with Sinclair Group from Audi to Land Rover, Mercedes to Volkswagen, Sinclair Group's state-of-the-art dealership across Wales are home to your favourite motor brands. Start your search today at sinclairgroup.co.uk. Speaking of cars, uh, Heleth, what car do you drive? Well, I do own a Volkswagen Beetle, but I don't drive it. My brother drives it, and um, he doesn't actually drive it anymore either because he crashed it on the weekend. So. You're joking? Yep. Oh, is he okay? <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. And that's the most important but thing. But your car's not. I don't think the car is. So it's I... an old car anyway, so it's fine. So, because Reese is in New Zealand, are you driving his car? So, yeah. is, am I reading in between the lines there? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Ga, come on. What car you got, bud? I don't actually have a car at the moment. So, uh, kindly, our friend Liam Williams has let me borrow his car. Love so, he's in Japan. So, yeah. uh, yeah, That's obviously coming back with my situation, I don't want to get stuck in a, in a car for too long. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I owe Sanj a couple of beers for that one. <laughs> that's that's really kind, that. It is, it is. No, um, yeah, thankfully he's a good mate. Play. There we go. Right, but if you need a new car now, you crashed one, where'd you go? I don't know. Sinclair Group. Oh, Sinclair Group. Just sorry, told sorry, you sorry, that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Come on, sorry. advertising, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk football if we can. Uh, Watford nil, Cardiff City won. Great win for Cardiff. Uh, Swansea nil, Plymouth won. Newport County 2, Swindon won. And Salford 3, Wrexham won. Um, Helev, um, you obviously watch a lot of football yeah. uh, with your job in Raja Cymru. Uh, you're there doing the kind of results service. You're mm. there all day for like five, six hours watching sport mm. back to back. <laughs> uh, fair play to you. Um, Cardiff's win, because I've seen oh. you down there in Cardiff City quite yeah. a few times. They are unpredictable at times. That's a huge win away at Watford. They needed that win, didn't they? Um, and just after the transfer window as well. I know none of those new players were involved. Aaron Ramsey was on the bench, didn't come on, but he was fit to be in that match day squad, which is a boost for Wales in the games coming up in um, March, the World Cup. Uh, no, the World Yeah, the Euros players. Euros, yeah. Euro players. Um... Josh Bowler, Errol Bullitt, the manager, admitted after the game that he was thinking of taking him off. Really? Josh Bowler scored the goal. So, you know, like taking him off before he scored. So lucky they kept him well, on. Well, maybe he, had, he, had, he saw kind of someone warming up because to get to win the ball back, he battled so hard. He hasn't always done that this season. And I don't know if you've seen the goal, Gareth. It's an absolute storm of a finish. Uh, you know, it's a beauty. It's one that he'll remember for a long yeah. time. Um, just quickly on Cardiff City's business, Hellas. Yeah. Does it frustrate you as a journalist that they leave it so late in the day on the last day of the transfer window? You know, like kind of five players rocking in. I was off that day, um, <laughs> so um, I left that to my colleagues at BBC Sport Wales. But um, no, I think it frustrates Errol Bullitt, the manager. Though he wanted to get things done and dusted early on in in, in January, but doesn't really happen in the January February window, does it? January February January transfer window. It's because I don't know the business is everyone's. It's like a ch game of chess, isn't it? Yeah. In, ja in January, so um, I'm not surprised that it was left till last minute. But um, Bullet is happy with the players that came in, and I think Cardiff City fans will be happy as well. Um, they just need to get settled now and get back on track to push for those. 
promotion. But Ramsey playoffs. being back, I know it's great for Wales, like you mentioned, for the Euros yeah. um, playoff matches. But for Cardiff City, you know, he's oh. just that different level of player, isn't he? They've missed him, haven't they? They've genuinely missed him um, since he's been out with injury. And I thought he was going to come back before Christmas, but um, yeah, it's not quite happened for him. But yeah, once he's back in that starting lineup, I, I don't think that he can play 90 minutes because, you know, he's he's not spring chicken anymore, Aaron Ramsey, oh. and he can't play. 90 minutes every week because the championship is so demanding isn't it well every Saturday Tuesday Wednesday um, but it's just going to make a huge difference that he's back on the training pitch for the for, for those young players as well just learning off him it's that experience that he has and it's uh, it's great to see him back it's a boost for the fans as well having kind of you know massive players playing um, quickly to Swansea Luke Williams you know they lost 1-0 kind of a game that potentially they could have won could have gone either way would you say Swansea City fans might be writing off the season now. It's about kind of staying up. They're going to be safe, that's for sure. And bedding in this new style of play with Luke Williams. Yeah, they're not far off the relegation drop zone, but I don't expect them to fall any further than than they are. But um, yeah, Luke Williams still looking for his first league win since taking charge. And um, you can't write it, can you? Morgan Whitaker um, <laughs> scoring against his old club for Plymouth and getting their first away win. But there is a bone. There is some sort of positive that Swansea can take from Morgan Whitaker, right? If they, if if Plymouth sell him on, Swansea get a sell on clause. Well, there's a, a sell on clause, so yeah. they get a fee. So you could say take, take that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know they scored against it. He scored against them, but um, but his price tag's gone up a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well, and he's a he's a great player. But um, yeah, Swansea. Ronald started <coughs> for them. Their new signing. Um, and apparently that's how you say it. Ronald, not. Ronald, okay. apparently. Ronald. It's what I heard. Yeah. Like Ronaldo, but without the O. Um, he looked good, but he doesn't speak any English and he arrived two days before the game. How can you... Like, we were talking about this with Harry Kane, weren't we? Yeah. When he gone over to, to Bayern Munich. It's amazing how quick... You can get involved. Yeah. In football, like in rugby, that, that would take weeks mm. to, to get involved, but football... It's he started just, two days after... Arriving. I suppose that's the beauty of the game is really... There are different tactics and odd different formations, but it's it's still a pretty simple game at its best. And mm. he look, you know, he look, roll out straight away into a different team, a new manager, different style. They can do it. Yeah, he didn't look out of place at all. From <sighs> what I've read. obviously I haven't seen the game, but um, from what I've read and what I've heard, um, he brought the pace and the physicality that Luke Williams and Andy Coleman, the chairman, said that they wanted to to find in this January uh, transfer window. Um, so hopefully, in the next few weeks, he'll be firing. Yeah, I know we have touched before, Gat, on kind of changing kind of the bedding in period before you join a new team or before you get involved in the first 11 or 15. But old habits, if you've got a certain habit that you like doing it on a pitch, so if a certain player likes doing something, how hard is it you to make that switch? The manager doesn't want me to do this, but then I, I you just mm. naturally just do it. Yeah, very tough. Um, because habits happen when you're not thinking, are they? Yes. Naturally, when you're tired and you see an opportunity that habit creeps back in. So uh, it can be very difficult to, to break. Um, and with rugby, you tend to, it does take a, you know, a good few weeks to work out and you need to spend a lot of time and focus on that particular area or habit or whatever yeah, it so is. Yeah, so would you in training kind of try and knock it out your system in a way? Yeah, I, I suppose you do. Um, at least try and identify it. I think when you can identify when you're about to do it, then at least it might steer you away from doing it. Um I mean, in rugby, most of the little habits are more mainly on your own skill set, so I don't think it's as maybe pronounced as other things. Um, football might be slightly different in the way maybe managers want their guys working back or working from the back. Um, they might be a little bit harder to break, but uh, yeah, it certainly takes you know a, a month or so to really break down those habits, I think. Yeah, so we'll see a lot of that, I think, with Luke Williams this season. So um, they'll be firing by next season, though, I think, for sure. I think mm. he's, a, he's a good appointment for them. Uh, Newport, they're, 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 are they are they going to do it? Are they going to sneak into the playoffs? Will Evans, friend of the pod. Do you recall yeah, that he was, he was, he was, pretty, he was good last week. But like, look, look into the table serious, though, Helens, mm. right? Will, he's got 20 goals for them now, right? Um, they're four points from seventh, eight points from sixth, though. Okay. Right? So they, they kind of, they're in the mix. Do you think they can do it? They're actually... Top three go through. So actually, it's mm. only the seventh they need to go for. It's only four behind, behind the playoffs. Ooh, you're getting me excited for Newport uh, pushing for a promotion. Can they do it on their budget, though? That's, you know, it'd be well, incredible he, if they did. They've got a new owner now, haven't they? So that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna help with the finances and um, playing against Manchester United, obviously going to bring some money into the uh, to the club. Um, Will Evans and Seb Palmer Holden, though, you keep them too fit up front and you're doing well, you're, you're doing well to 
score. You're definitely going to score goals mm. because them they work so well together. Will Evans's um, goal tally dropped off a bit when Palmer Holden got injured and sent back to Bristol to rehab, um, but now he's back. Both of them are back doing what they do best now. Um, but it is it, it is possible for them to push if they, a few more wins. Yes, um, and it's just weird, isn't it, that this has happened to Newport. They're on the run of what did you say eight. Eight games. And they haven't lost in eight games. Yeah, so, if you take the United game out of the equation, right? But then you flip that, and Wrexham is the other Welsh team in that league, mm. and everyone just thought oh, Wrexham got to do another, got to do it again, double promotion. But they slipped to fourth now after they lost in Salford on Saturday. Um, but again, they were away from home. Wrexham, um, they need to start picking up points on the road. Um, they're only two points Wrexham away from the top two, so. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about Wrexham yet, but it's interesting that Newport and Wrexham could be both fighting for promotion to League One. And Come like, on, let's hmm. put you on the spot there because oh, you do me, watch I'm, a lot. I'm of, myself around. Uh, no, you, you do watch a lot of football as well. So Newport would be great for Wales. Can Newport make the playoffs? And do you think Wrexham will get automatic promotion? Yes, for Wrexham. Yeah, I think they will do it. Their home form is just you just cannot break them at home. Touch wood, if there's any wood in this room, um, <laughs> because they're they're home next week, which will which will be, which is good for them. Um, Newport, I think they'll be close. They might if they get playoffs. I don't think they'll they'll get through from the playoffs. Does that makes sense. That's what I think will happen to them. Say that again. So if you, if, so they, if they make the playoffs, they're not gonna go on from there. Yeah, yeah. But I think they take that. You know, mm. you know, the journey of your club just being yeah, in, in the kind absolutely. of the playoffs is exciting, isn't mm. it? Um, okay, we'll park the football there uh, for a little bit because we're going to get our uh, sponsor on now. It's time for James Level and Dragon Bet. Dragon Bet, the bookmaker of Wales with the best odds on Welsh sport. Please gamble responsibly. Uh, Mr. James Level, welcome to the party. How are you doing this week? You okay? Yeah, all good, thanks. Hi, guys. You know the question, good or bad weekend for the bookies? We won this weekend because uh, everyone lives about, loves to hear about bookies winning. So, yes, we won and we've got a few quid in the back burner ready for Cheltenham, which is a couple of weeks away. Yeah, good, good. So, what what made you the win? Was it kind of Wales losing, but everyone back in Wales or not? No, no, we didn't. Not many people bet Wales. So I think people have lost faith in them this year, but hopefully it'll be um, a bit of resurgence after that game. But it was the Dublin Racing Festival in, I- in Ireland, and we have taken on some big hitters on the horse racing this uh, recently. So I uh, had to change my underpants a few times over the weekend. But uh, yeah, we finished the right way, so it was all good. So uh, in addition to the rugby on the weekend, you had your lot, lots of kind of focus your end on, on the horse racing, yeah? Yeah, that's right. So Cheltenham's coming up in about two, uh, about three weeks. So everything is Cheltenham focused at the moment. And that is it's huge in bookmaking terms. It is literally make or break for the year. So if you have a bad Cheltenham, I remember my dad's been a bookie for years. He had a bad Cheltenham once. So he was literally in tears. He said, I don't know what we're going to do for the rest of the year. So uh, yeah, it was a lean year that year. But it's those three days are just, sorry, four days now, uh, literally determine your year. It's crazy the the difference in that week. So yeah, a few nervous weeks leading up to it. Yeah, good, good. We know where to go for our tip chips, uh, t- for our tips for Cheltenham. That's for sure. Um, let's go to football then, James. Uh, let's look at what we've got. We have got Cardiff versus Preston this weekend. Hull versus Swansea. Walsall versus Newport. Wrexham versus Bradford. Um, what are you going to give us for Cardiff City versus Preston? So Cardiff is six to five. Nice to see him favourites once, and I think a decent bet. And I was having a look through. So Cardiff. <clears throat> The last uh, two games they've scored in the first half and Preston scored their three goals in the first half last week against Ipswich. So we are going 21 to 10, the best odds on World Sport. Cardiff uh, Cardiff and Preston both to score in the first half. Okay. So the most half in the first goals. Yeah, Sorry, Fair most enough. goals in the first half. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, so that's that's 21 to 10, yeah? Yeah, just over two to one. Okay. Hell, 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 hell versus Swansea. Where are you going with Hell and Swansea? Uh, Swansea are fifteen to four, so um, yeah, not favourites. Obviously, Hull are fairly strong favourites of four to six. But we are going Swansea fifteen to two. That's seven and a half to one to keep a clean sheet. It's not something they've done a lot this season, but seven and a half to one. I think that might be all right. That one. Okay. Walsall versus Newport. Newport are flying at the moment. Will Evans is flying as well. What can you tip us with there? Yeah, it looks close on the betting. So Newport are fourteen to five, just under three to one. I think it could go either way, and we haven't got the player odds up yet, but. Betting with Evans to score has got to be a good thing. Yeah, that's a tempting one, isn't it? 20 goals this season, Helevs. That is very impressive at any level, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And I, um, he's definitely put some uh, 
uh, zeros on his contract after that Man United game. Hundred percent, not for Newport, but for anyone that wants to come in and buy him. Yeah. it's going to be a it's going to be a good deal for Newport if they sell him. Yeah, they've they've turned offers though down. You were saying off the mic before, yeah. Yeah, but... so Hugh Jenkins, the uh, new owner of Newport, um, said that they've had more than one written offer for Will Evans, and they've turned them turned them down. So they're oh. going to keep him for now, which is. Which is good for Newport County fans, but um, don't be surprised if Will Evans moves in the summer. Okay, here we go. And Wrexham, Bradford to finish then. Wrexham need to bounce back, but they are at home, so they do well at home generally. Yeah, they're just just a shade of odds on Wrexham. They're 19 to 20, so the market expects a win in there. So do I, I think. Okay, fine. Uh, Let's go to rugby then. Um, Was it a good weekend on the Six Nations for you guys with the results that that kind of we, we saw? Yeah, it was a bit mixed, really. So we kind of um, took a good spread of money, lots of action. People love betting on the Six Nations. And just, it's nice for me because I'm a bookie, so it's normally kind of finance lead the way. But I just really enjoyed cheering on Scott, uh, cheering on Wales on the weekend. I thought it was just such a such a fun game, wasn't it? Such a good comeback. Um, yeah. So yeah, there was lots, lots of money across the board. Um, Wales, are, we are going 5-1 to one, them to beat England as a normal price. But we're also going a huge... So we're a max bet of ten pounds because I don't want to be crying all the way home from Twickenham. Wales to beat England at ten to one. So that's a special offer on the site just for the sporting re- uh, listeners here. Ten to one Wales to beat England. Wow, that's tempting. That's good. Well done. Um, okay, but is it? We will go back to Wales in a minute. Is uh, Ireland just going to be your favourites now to win this after that win against France because they were class as well? Yeah, from a betting perspective, it's all over. They're one to four to win the tournament. Um, I think they're what are they four to six to win the Grand Slam? So yeah, it looks like they'll. They've okay. done it already, I think. Okay, so uh, we, we know what Wales are to beat England. Um, special player markets on this in the game? Yeah, we've got loads of special player markets. We try and do stuff that no one else does. So we have a load of player props, we call them. So special player markets. I think Gareth might have a good idea here, although we won't allow him to bet on it. We've got another Ivan Tony on our case. But um, <laughs> what, we've got Aaron Wainwright to make the most tackles at 9 or 2. So I think that's a good good little bet there. Um, what else have we got? We have got Rio Dwyer to make the most clean breaks at five to one. He Ooh. got that against Scotland, and we're also going Cameron Winnett to make the most runs at eight to one. So a load of little um, player special markets there for the kind of everyone in Wales thinks they're a selector, don't they? So let's uh, let's see how good they are. So you think have a look at the player markets and take this on. Cameron Winnett most runs. That's a good one. Uh, eight to one as well because you know he was quite impressive on the weekend. I thought um, Andrew Dyer there five to one. Okay, uh, France versus Scotland because Helen did mention this earlier. It's a big game that one. It's going to be a tough one for for Scotland, but a game that they need to put a marker down on if they can. How are you seeing that game? So, so France are favourites are one to two, um, or you can bet Scotland with the handicap plus five and a half points. So I think it's going to be fairly close, and um, five and a half points head start for Scotland wouldn't be a bad bet in my view. This is what they do, isn't it, guy? They just tease you in like that. <laughs> well, like, they've actually gone all right against France at home the last couple of Six Nations, I think, haven't they? So that's not a bad little uh, bad little option, I think. Yeah, okay. What would you fancy for that one, Heled? Do you think Scotland can do it? Or do France going to be too strong? I think France will do them. Yeah. After losing against Ireland, that's the problem. So they're going to be wanting to bounce back. They need to bounce back. That French crowd, you've been there in Paris, mm. Hella. They, they turn on that team quickly. Yeah, they do, actually. That is a good point. Um, yeah, they'll be wanting to please their fans uh, once again. Um, and um, they're going to be hurt. And a, and a wounded side might be too difficult to stop. Yeah. Okay, Italy, Ireland. What are the odds is the question. We all think Ireland are going to win this, but what are you giving for... Uh, for if Italy well, are going to win, what are you going to give us? They're 40 to 1 on the site, but really, <laughs> I think we'll, we're will we going to push them out because they... Listen, they, they ain't going to win, are they? No. Um, yeah, no. 40 to 1 currently, but it, yeah, j- just save your money. Give it to me another day on something else. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. And have you got any other specials on Wales at all that we can kind of have a, have a look at this weekend? Yeah, so we've got we did those specials last week where we did Wales to score twelve points in each match. We were eleven to ten, so they had to get twelve points or more in each match. That cut down to evens, so it's kind of a fifty fifty chance. Um yes, they got over the one hurdle scoring the more than twelve against Scotland, obviously. Yeah. It's the the Island France matches where they get twelve points in those games. But um that's evens. We have gone two to one. It was three to one, but we're now two to one. Wales to score a hundred or more tournament points. That was really popular at three to one. Um, I'd say they're well on their way there to get 100 tournament points. So that's still two to one. We've gone five to four, um, them to get four or more bonus points in the tournament. 
So they got two already. Really important bonus points last week, obviously. So five to four to get two or more bonus points in the tournament. Or three to one to be showed the fewest yellow cards in the tournament. So they were the only team in week one not to get a yellow card. I think uh, Gareth will probably tell us that um, Mr. Gatlin instills a bit of discipline in the team, how important it is. So if you think they're not going to get, um, if they're going to get yes, ye- less yellow cards than everyone else, that's three to one. And for those pessimists about you, we are going four to one Wales to finish bottom. Boom. But they won't finish bottom. They'll beat Italy, <laughs> surely. Yeah, I, I, th- I mean, I'm feeling positive like you, Gareth, for the weekend. I think Wales can beat England in Twickenham. It's just a kind of discipline will be key, won't it? Especially against the English. Yeah, I think it's all part of making sure we're in the game for as long as possible. I think if we can get into that 60 minute mark and be in with a chance, then I really fancy the boys. Um, so discipline goes a long way to scoreboard pressure and, and those sorts of things. So I really do feel if we can just be composed, like we're saying that first half and boys get used to playing in that, uh, in the cauldron of, of Twickenham, then I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if we get a famous away one. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Some really good bets there, James, on the website. So if you want to do that, get to Dragon Bet and get involved with that. You've also got your game of the week that you do every single week. Um, that's on Dragon Bet. You can bet on any level of Welsh sport. Um, do you want me to do the headline for this one for you? The teams involved. Yeah, please, because I yeah. cannot pronounce it. So I, I need your help, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think you would be able to. Um, it's uh, Hendy versus Wine Arloyd. Now, can you say that, Heled? Wine Arloyd? Can you say it, Gar? I can't even get close. That's Liam Williams' <laughs> uh, oh, is that, club. Is that the W Massive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the w, you can call him the W Massive then, okay, James, just to save you from saying there Wine Arloyd. Um, tell us more about this one for the weekend then. Yeah, it wasn't just. It was they? They had an NFL player, didn't they? Was it Terry Price, who was apparently one of the best ever fullbacks for Wales? He went to the Buffalo Bills, I think. Tried to be a kicker, but didn't quite make it. So, okay, uh, okay. Quite a club, apparently. Oh no, that must be Er Hendy. Apologies, that was Er Hendy. Um, but yeah, so we have gone. Er Hendy are fairly strong favourites, so one to four, and the handicap is ten points. So you can bet Er Hendy uh, with a ten point head start at evens and. <clears throat> And that is in the WRU Division West. So it should be a good game. And if you're not going to watch the Big Six Nations, get down there, wherever on the hell it is in Wales, and go and watch it. <laughs> I can imagine a few people in Hendy and Wynard Lloyd betting on that. <laughs> There's double with Wales to win in Twickenham, maybe. They're not far Absolutely. away from each other, Hendy no, and Wynard Lloyd. Really a bit of a derby, yes. Yeah, quite close, isn't it? Um, we've also got our charity bet every single week. Um, I won last week, didn't I, James? You did, you did. I was very upset. Ruined my, ruined my dinner, that did. <laughs> there we go. Well, we, we, every single week we have a charity bet for those of you who are new to the pod. So basically, I have one bet and then Heather and Gareth have a bet as well. We, we uh, kind of support Latch and Prostate Cymru on this one. So quite simply this week, I'm gonna, not going to make it hard for you, James. I'm just going to go for a Cardiff City win. So remind us of the odds in Cardiff City. I think you said it earlier on. Six to five, yeah? That is six to five, but I think thinking about it, come come the day we'll boost them out a little bit, Fuga. As you as you're on him, I've lost faith in them already. Now you're backing them, so uh, we'll bo- boost the odds out on the day. I was gonna, I was going to ask because of charity to have a boost, so I'm glad he said that. <laughs> to be fair. So if Preston score a Cardiff City on uh, on Saturday, the, you, when you announce that goal, it's just going to be very sad, Garrett Hardy voice. Uh, yeah, well, it always is when City lose. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I get so upset about it. It's, it does actually genuinely spoil my day. Um, Gareth and Helev, um, I know you got to be careful about kind of um, who you put bets on because Gareth you can't do the rugby Helen you're going to be married soon to a rugby player so you can't do that either but where are you going to go with your charity bet of the week we're going to go NFL yeah we, we want to sort of have a look at Super Bowl Sunday um, you know the famous uh, famous Super Bowl so we're going to look at going uh, the 49ers to win with hopefully an extra boost here of going Christian McCaffrey Caffrey, McCaffrey yeah. to score so I'm hoping James looks after us here so a double, yeah? A double. Uh, you're in trouble if you're asking a bookie to look after. <laughs> you, you? Like, I hope you um, boost this one. We are going. It looks like it's, it's going to be a close match by the looks of it. So the 49s are just favourites. Yep. We are going to go, for you, we'll do that as a double at 6-1. to one. So that's a nice 6-1 to one Las Vegas boost for you. How about that? All right. Hello, are you happy with that? Happy with that. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, 49ers do come through. Have you got your chicken wings ready to watch the game, <laughs> Gareth? I'd actually like to go somewhere and watch it. It'd be a bit, but it's late though, isn't it? It's yeah, like, that's it? the thing. It is an amazing occasion to yeah. watch it, but you've got to kind of have, a, have you sleep in before it. You've got to be fueled properly because mm. drinking and watching it, you're going to fall asleep, right? Yeah, yeah. I actually think I've got training off Monday, so uh, I think a few of us boys are thinking about trying to find somewhere in Cardiff uh, to watch it. But you do love your NFL. 49ers, they're going to be tough to beat. They will. They will. I think... 
you know, with the NFL, it just seems to be like the, the guys that have played in these Super Bowls, they're such big events. Uh, Pat Mahomes is, you know, an absolute superstar of the game and is, has already won a couple, uh, been in a, already in a Super Bowl and lost. So that seems to go a long way. I, I've always been a fan of the Chiefs, but I would really like to see the 49, 49ers win this. Yeah, I'm going momentum 49ers. Six yeah. to one, was that the odds you gave? Yeah. Six to one. Special Dragon Boost, six to one double. There you go. Yeah, eight to one, I think would have been fair, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> James, it's always a pleasure to have you on, mate. Um, I wish you all the best for the sporting week, and we'll speak to you next week, okay? Cheers, guys. Thanks. Fantastic stuff. Thanks to James Day once again. And remember, if you are betting, uh, Dragon Bet have got you covered for all your sport in action from the lower leagues to the top leagues. The only place for Welsh sport fans to bet. So get involved with the bookies that look after Welsh sport. But of course, please gamble responsibly. OK, there we go. That's the end of the week uh, on the Sporting Pod anyway. Um, Heleth, plans? Chill and then flat Today? out next weekend? No, for the week to come? Um, under 18s rugby final on Wednesday night. Yeah. That is Scarlet under 18s versus uh, Ospreys under 18s. It's for it's the game to see who's going to win it. Ospreys uh, current champions. I heard Scarlet's a favourite. Um, I'd say they're just about favourites. Yeah, they're looking strong yeah, I've this heard season. That. They've got a few players. I'd say keep your eye on for the under 20s next year. And yeah. with seeing the under 20s on Friday night, right? Morgan Moss, I've heard, is not far away from actually playing in the main team if anything happens to Wayne, Wayne Wright as a number eight um, and Cam Winnett and Mackenzie Martin Cam Winnett obviously started on the weekend Cam Winnett not in that squad but he's in the the extended squad for the Six Nations um, both of them were playing in the under 20s versus Scotland last this time last year Yeah. so that's how close these young players are to to getting into that senior squad now um, so yeah looking forward to the under 18s on Wednesday night so is that Rugby Pau Best Rugby yeah. Pau on, yeah. on, on all the socials YouTube S4C yeah. but Click. some of the games on Rugby Pau I don't know if you kind of tap into it sometimes uh, Gat, they, there's some storming games yeah on it. so we do the Colleges League first and then this is the regional under 18s um, the Scarlet Cardiff one two weeks ago um, was a 40 to 40 44 point game wow, obviously bro. that defensively it's not great yeah, okay. um, <laughs> yeah. but it, um, yeah, but it finished it was like a nail biting last five minutes as well so um, yeah it was really good so that that's on Wednesday for me and then under 20s at the Rec in Bath on Friday night which will be it's at the Rec is it yes it'll oh, be awesome. really good at the Rec I think so Wales England um, and then travel up to Twickenham then for the big game on Saturday just just on that actually I know, we don't know how much time we've got left here but do you think Wales 20s should play their games at the Arms Park. They're playing their last two at the Arms Park. They're playing their last two. You're asking a North Whalian here. Yeah, I know this. I know <laughs> like this. The, like the, but the I one... just, look, I, the only, I think it's great. I, I'm all for taking the game everywhere. I really am. But you can't help but think Friday night when the Scottish are already in town, how awesome would it be for that atmosphere? When you know, you know they're going to go to that game. It's great for the, the young kids playing in front of 10,000. Yeah. Because I know the, there might be it might have been better last week, but the last couple of years, the crowds haven't been that great up there. And I also think um, the last game against France is on a Thursday night at the Arms Park. So the next two Wales home games at the Arms Park, just for context, the first one was up in Colwyn Bay in North Wales. Yeah. Um, and they're, what, what Gareth's saying, they're, they're usually up in North Wales. Um, but I completely agree with you. With the scheduling, should that first one have been in Cardiff? Like you say, with the Scotland fans all coming. Lots yeah. of anyway. Welsh fans from North Wales, West Wales, down in Cardiff ready as well. Well, this is the thing for the game the next day. So mm. these final two games, home games at the Arms Park might work well uh, for the under 20s. Um, and yeah, because the Arms Park... Just it feels like it'd be a bit of a greater platform for these young kids to to really step up. And I, and I think the, the Arms Park would go close to, mm. to filling that, which would be fantastic for, for everyone. Uh, and it'd probably allow some coaches to actually get along to, to watch it with... You know, like the house in the guys aren't far away now. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's something I think that needs to be to be looked at in the future. There we go. You've made your point, and it was a good one as well. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry to run up. Uh, how's your week looking, Gar? Uh, yeah, look, uh, obviously just bouncing back from from a week off in Dubai, so just go find my legs again, and uh, yeah, look, um, bit of running for me, and uh, just training hard, and um, I'm unsure whether I'm up to Twickenham this weekend or not. I'm not sure yet, so. Uh, might be there as doing some commercial stuff. Haven't figured that one out. Otherwise, it's just a, a quiet weekend watching uh, 
Three games of rugby. A Wales win. And an NFL Super Bowl yes, final. There yes, you go. Well there you go. You heard it here first. Uh, thanks for both of you for your company today. It's been absolutely fantastic. And it's great to have your company at home, wherever you are listening from today. And remember, we'll be back next Monday for more Sporting Wales chats. And you can follow us on our Instagram at Sporting Wales or pick up the Sporting Wales magazine in various sport clubs, gyms, leisure centres and lots of other places right across Wales and, of course, online. Or you can subscribe and have sporting.wales in your inbox, in your email. Simple as that. And please click follow wherever you are listening to this podcast so it's delivered straight into your inbox every single Monday. Tell your friends about us and share the love. We'll catch you next week. Wherever you go, wherever you are, enjoy your Sport in Wales week. Sport in Wales podcast. Supported by Dragon Bet. Your go-to for Welsh sports news and views.